because before I started to learn to play the saxophone, I knew what the saxophone was supposed to sound like. <laughs> Still a dark shadow on that bit, isn't there? Isn't that better? Slight issue with the lighting. Now, hello there, welcome to today's vlog. Yesterday, I was going through my getting things done routine of trying to go through some really old emails, and I found an email that I'd sent to myself way back in February, February, February. 2012, so over eight years ago, nearly eight and a half years ago, and it was this interview with Joe Henderson. Now, I don't know where I got it from, and I'm very open if it's your interview or you know where it's from to give the correct credit for it, uh, but no idea. And it's a fantastic interview with one of the legendary players of the saxophone. I've pasted it in the link below on Cambridge Saxophone, so you can check it out, and I'll refer to some of the text on it. But I really wanted to emphasize some of the things that came up in this Joe Henderson interview. The first one is is how important it is to be exposed to music at a young age. And I was reading a great article from Wynton Marsalis on Twitter the other day, where he was talking about remaking New York City. I think it's in the New Yorker. If I can find it, I will link to it. Am I in focus here? Just kind of talking about how we're doing with the arts and how we're gonna remake ourselves after this COVID-19 uh, pandemic, how you know everything shut down and, and all the other business, all the downsides, what are gonna be the positives when we come back out of it? And one of the things Winton was talking about is how people are exposed to sports at a young age. You know, football for me, football, cricket, Formula One, those things that I saw my dad watching on the TV. And I therefore become interested in them I want to follow them and as I grow up I I want to partake in them you know and sports have really got it down haven't they whereas music hasn't always managed to do that but Henderson talks about he says here I remember one of my brothers in particular came from a very large family to Joe Henderson who is a scientist had this jazz at the Philharmonic collection he was a jazz buff and it was important and good for me to have been around that early on because before I started to learn to play the saxophone I knew what the saxophone was supposed to sound like. That is so important. One of the things I say to all my students, whatever, and if you go on my beginner's course on the website, whatever, is why do you want to play the saxophone? And so often, almost exclusively, is because of the sound of it. But you need to know what the saxophone should sound like before you start to play it. And I think if you've got some great players, and so many players talk about the influences of hearing saxophone recordings, you know, before they started to learn to play. I mean, one of the reasons I ended up on saxophone was my dad was in bands and they used to always win the Battle of the Bands in Blackpool. And then they'd go to the final in Manchester, I think for three or four years, every year, you know, three or four years concurrently, and they'd lose out to a band that had a saxophone. It was the 80s, you know, the saxophone was in everything. The problem was, by the time we got to the 90s, the saxophone was out of favour and no one was, it wasn't really heard in many recordings, but it is, it's that sound of the saxophone that's so important. And then Joe Henderson talks about the importance of Lester Young, you know, kind of the reason his brother used to be able to get him to play three or four notes of Lester Young. And that's why I'm, I'm so passionate about transcribing Lester Young. On Cambridge Saxophone, we've got at least three Lester Young solos. We've got Back to the Land, we've got one with Billy Holiday, and I think an All of Me, which is Booth Holiday, there's another one anyway. Transcribing Lester Young is so important. It's something Branford Marsalis hammered into me when I went over to see him in the States in 2005. Just the importance of getting to grips with Lester. If you watch the Coffee with Dan with another of Branford's students, Luca Stoll, Luca will tell you about how important it was not just to get the notes right, but to get the vibrato right and everything else like that. And here's Joe Henderson saying, uh, I remember taking some of Lester Young's solos off a record with the help of my brother. This was around the age of nine. Well, I wasn't doing it myself. My brother was helping me, having the kind of mind he had. It used to amaze me. It used to amaze me how he was able to do that at the time. We had these 78 uh, records. He'd take the needle, set it down, and say, Joe, play these notes. And he'd let about four or five notes go by, and then I'd find them on the horn. The power of transcribing. And, you know, the beauty is today, you've got things like I've got a camera saxophone where I'm taking you through transcribing, teaching you how to do it. Joe Henderson just had his brother helping him. I mean, obviously, Joe Henderson's, you know, a legend, a genius of music. But, you know, it, those facilities are open to you now. And, and take those ways that these legends have learned to play and bring them into your own playing. The next thing is the importance that Joe Henderson places upon the music of Charlie Parker and for me this didn't quite shock me because obviously Charlie Parker is so important and I have a course on the Cambridge Saxophone website called the A to Z of Bebop and I was kind of 
really, I feel like learning bebop heads is something that's so important if you want to learn it, be a better player of jazz. And I do it. I still, every week when I'm practicing, try and play a particular bebop head. Sometimes from that course I've done that A to Z, but sometimes they're not related. You know, if you want to learn how to get around minor two fives really, really well, learn how to play Hot House. You know, it's just such a great melody. Learn to play it in several different keys. You, you know, if you can play Hot House in seven or eight different keys, you ain't going to come across too many two five progressions that are going to cause you an issue. Learn Cherokee, learn those kind of things. Um, but this importance of knowing your way around bebop. And then as well, if you look later in the interview, he talks about how, you know, growing up in Detroit, he's getting exposed to uh, Coltrane when Coltrane's playing with Bostitch. He talks about how he didn't know that the guy was John Coltrane, who I just sat and talked to and met when I was about 14 years old. I also saw Gene Ammons when I was about 15. He was the red top guy, you know, the little tune, my little red top. It was classic stuff, good music. So, you know, he's, he's listening to rhythm and blues. He's taking that influence from that. He even talks about country and Western music. You know, the influence that that has had on, on his development as a musician, soaking up all these influences that come at you. But primarily, if you're going to play the saxophone, you need to know what it's going to sound like. However, I love this quote. The interview says, you know, how many students have come to you and said, Joe, what are these patterns? And Joe Henderson says, and these are the kind of students I don't take. I want to affect the part of their brain to create these things. When you think about this in a certain way, there is no formula. So on the one hand, he's learning Charlie Parker. Yes, but then he's coming to it and almost taking that great Parker quote, which so many of us like to quote, but don't really like to do the work on, which is master your instrument, master the music, forget all that and just play. But you've got to do the first two things first. And part of you learning Charlie Parker is to get mastering the music and get mastering your instruments so that then you can have that freedom just to get out there. And he says, the way I teach is memory plus improvisation. I don't allow tape recorders in the lesson, which kind of dates the recording. Obviously, Joe's not been with us for a long time. Um, there's so much printed material around, fake books, etc. And I don't remember using those kind of things. These things tend to become crutches. I've learned the tunes. I've seen people come up on the bandstand. And before I can count the tune off, I'm hearing people turning these pages. And he laughs. Night after night, they're still trying to find this song. I really wish they would understand that the mind will absorb the music in its time. You can't overload it. Wow. I want to write that across the top of my studio. The mind will absorb the music in its time. And you've got to spend time learning the music. Legally required at the moment in UK shops, not till Saturday anyway, and I might be exempt, but I'm trying to be a good citizen. Trying to make sure I'm wearing my mask and setting an example. I only need to nip in for a few little things, so uh, here it goes. One thing that really doesn't work well while you're wearing a mask is Face ID on your Apple iPhone, but I do worry about this whole mask, don't wear a mask debate. There's definitely a lot of advantages to wearing a mask and if you can wear one you should wear one inside but there are a number of people like myself included i took charlie to the shops yesterday and wore the mask for a good 35 40 minutes but after that i couldn't wear it much longer it was really flaring up my asthma so we've got to be quick in all areas of life not to rush to judgment on people but especially when it comes to these things with masks or not to wear a mask i mean you don't have to if you sorry if you can wear one then please do but you know even then even just that last five ten minutes I can feel uh, my asthma flaring up a little bit so you know I can understand why and there are going to be people who it's not a good idea to wear a mask and the, the sad thing is there's a lot of those people that have breathing issues or COPD or anything else like that they're the people who really need protection from this as well but um, yeah I mean it's just so true isn't it you know there's so much divisiveness around and we sort of seem to have come together for this short period of time but everything's now fracturing again whether it's in political discourse or uh, social media particularly you know I've noticed even even on my little channel uh, with the ten and a half thousand of us not so little anymore is it um, which is great thank you for being here don't forget to like and subscribe as I should have said at the top um, but you know the fractious comments are coming back again we had this period of time where 
it wasn't there and then now you know the negativity is coming back again and I never really want to start pushing negativity on my channel at all I want it to be a place of positivity a place of growth a place where we can all learn things where we can share things old book and this is the opening sketch it was called May Street there of uh, what turned into lipstick on a pig um, it's amazing finding some of these old books and some of these different things thank you very much for watching today's vlog I'm gonna be away for a little while now on the vlog I realize I've been trying to do weeklies We're into the summer holidays I'm gonna do the best I can make sure you check out that Joe Henderson uh, interview below and all the other stuff that's down there uh, thank you very much for watching I'll see you really soon bye bye